This is exercise number 21 in my Paint with Lens series of short lessons. And today we'll paint a river scene. We'll start with a canvas about 24 inches by about 18 inches and with my 1 inch house painting brush we'll spread out the white paint for the undercoat for the sky. Now my paint's very thick. I'm working in acrylics. I'll need to thin it and I'll scratch it on with a knife first That'll make it a bit easier to go on. And then as I'm working through the undercoat, I'll spray it with a little bit of water. Over on my palette, I have raw sienna and I have ultramarine blue there. We'll pick up a little bit of raw sienna and start with a glow in the middle of our sky area. That's too dark. Let's add some white. You do need it pale. Don't be fussy with your brush strokes. Just put it on, crisscross brush stroke, and then smooth it out. I'll add the ultramarine blue right in the very corner of the painting and then bring it down. Here's where we add a little bit of water if necessary to thin our paint out otherwise it becomes sticky and unmanageable. If you're working with oils you will need to thin all your paint to a creamy consistency before you start painting. Now we're nearly finished our sky but we do need a little bit of white in the middle there. Now we mix our raw sienna and our ultramarine blue together. We'll mix a colour that looks a little bit like green. And then with my one inch house painting brush, let's mix a little bit of light tone just for the sunlight on the trees. And the brush is loaded with dark and that little bit of light tone on one side. You can dab in your background trees, dab, 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 dab. Don't go over it too much. You don't want it all muted together and go back and deliberately knock out any very dark pieces. We can put them in later if you need to. Try and get this tree shape, this irregular shape with curves. Now I'll put a little bit of dark in here, just deliberately put a little bit in there to give us a bit of shape in there. You'll see the brush is loaded with dark on one side and light on the other. And I'm dab dabbing quite hard now to give us that foliage look and as we move away we get darker and more vibrant with our brush strokes. Again I've loaded it with darker again and because we're coming near the edge of the painting I'll go quite dark and this will give us a feeling that the bush moves away from us as it moves in towards the middle. Now across on the other side we'll do the same thing but we'll jump forward a little bit with a very dark brush stroke and I'm pushing the brush on quite hard now give us that very firm foliage look. Now that's our background locked in. We can clean our brush here with horizontal brush strokes. And now with a clean flat brush I'll block in what is the undercoat for the background and the undercoat for the water. Use horizontal brush strokes, long brush strokes and fill it right into the bottom where your water needs to be. Now we can add a little bit of blue to this to give us the blue reflection of the sky because this is the undercoat for the water. Later we'll add the reflections but right now we just put the blue of the sky in there. Now back to our palette. I've added Scarlet Lake, Violet and Warm Yellow and I've added a bit more blue as we're going to need it. I'll add white to each of these colours to give them a variation of tone clean your knife each time to keep your colours separated. And then with our one inch house painting brush we can mix a colour a little bit dark with the, with the red and the blue mixed together gives us a purple and then we pick up a bright colour on the other side so there's two colours on the brush at once dark and light. And with that we can put in a row of purple trees. I might as well turn that into water while it's here because that will be water there. If I push firm with the brush the dark comes off underneath and gives you a more of a tree look. We'll just fill that little bit in now and I'll get some white and put it on the edge of my brush and give it a highlight on top of the purple and that'll look like the sun shining on the edge of the purple trees. It looks quite pretty. Plenty more dark and plenty more light. This time we'll go for a red purple and we'll have a big tree up here. You'll see with the very dark and the very light and I'll force the brush on a little bit harder it will give us a better tree effect and down into the water. While the brush is loaded, if it's still going, well, you can add your water. If it runs out, you need to add your water later. 
and you get quite a lot done with one brush load if you load it well. Pull it down into the water. Then you do need to clean your brush before reloading so why not clean it down there. Load it well again, plenty of colour, plenty of dark, plenty of light and dab 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 your tree shape into the edge of the picture. Unload the brush again. Now this time let's have some bright yellow trees. I've loaded it with dark and light and then I've got dark on, on the back of the brush. We'll put them in this area here but I do like that bit there. I better not cover it over too much. Dab 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 into your mushroom shapes made into umbrella shapes and this is down into the water. While the brush is running well we might as well keep painting our water. Now you notice my brush is getting a bit dull there but that's alright. We'll put the undercoat in for the water. Here I've cleaned the brush and reloaded it several times and if I push quite hard I'll get deliberate foliage look. Quite a forceful stroke there to push it on to make the foliage. Now with this little round brush loaded with two colours with dark and with light we can put in our tree trunks. Twiddle the brush in two fingers as you pull it up and your tree trunks will change colour. It's easy to do, just needs a little bit of practice. As the trees come towards you the tree trunks can become darker and you can put a little bit in the water if you wish. And then we fill in the other side in the same way, just a few little branches. Now it's time to tidy up our reflections. I've cleaned my one inch house painting brush and just pull the reflections down into the water. This is working wet on wet so we'll put a little bit more in there and pull the wet paint down over the water and finish our reflections here or there. The reflections come straight towards you. Now here's an easy way to put in your distant banks. Get a bit of greeny yellow right on the edge of the knife and then place it where you want the bank and drag it along. Now these must be very horizontal. If they're not horizontal your water will look like it's leaning. Then I'll load the knife again with plenty of paint and sculpture the banks on that are closer to us. These also need to be rather horizontal. Under the banks we need some very dark colour so I've mixed a few dark colours together here and put them on the edge of my knife. With that you can sculpture in the bank edge. Keep this horizontal also and I'll clean the knife there. Make sure you clean your knife each time before you pick up paint and sculpture in the other side. You need a very little bit of paint for this distant bank and a little line just touch it on and that'll give us the dark line on the distant bank. That gives us very good perspective and with a fan brush we can just touch up the grass, a little bit of grass here and there, leave your bright spots, just touch it up. Then we clean the brush and come forward and touch touch these closer banks. Now the brush here is picking up a little bit of paint. It's taking it off and picking it up. A little bit on, up. You see there's a little bit of paint on there. When you come down near the rocks you can pick up the little bit of paint and put it between the rocks and push it up. Up. These are bigger brush strokes because they're closer. There's a little bit of dark on my brush. I'll, I'll use that to make a bit of shadow under these trees here and then turn it into grass. The bit of blue paint on the brush makes the yellow turn into a green but do leave some yellow there. I clean my brush and then come back and touch up these little bits that are missing and deliberately put your grass where you need it here because it's quite close. We don't want to destroy our bank but we do want to make it look real. Put the brush on, push it up and off. Now turn the brush over with the paint on it you can turn it into reflections. And with our knife with a very little bit of paint on the edge we'll give it a dark line. These dark lines need to be horizontal so you stagger them to bring them towards you. And again this time with the knife loaded with white, just a little bit of white, put white lines. These must be horizontal. They are close together in the distance and get a little bit further apart as they come towards us. I clean and reload the knife and then we do the distance. Horizontal white lines. You must remember to clean your knife before you pick up paint each time. I think I need some reflections here so I'll touch them up with the fan brush. It doesn't matter what brush you use. 
whichever one you're comfortable with and again I'll add the white lines just underneath the bank they weren't very strong so I'll put a few very white ones here over the dark reflections it's good to have your white line overlap the edge of a reflection like that makes it look real I've added burnt sienna to the palette now we'll mix it with our blue and that'll form a very dark color put a bit of crimson in there or red and fill in the foreground roughly this is the soil don't mix it completely have all these different colors and different shapes but do make sure you cover all the canvas in this area so we don't have to go back over it then with some white and other paler colors we'll put it down here ready and I'll make some tones that look good like sunlight on the rocks we might have a few rocks there so that looks rather like sunlight on those rocks and sculpture it on the top of the rocks just put it on where you think sunlight might be shining on the soil or on the rocks and on the top of this we'll put some grass so don't be too fussy about making a mistake we'll put the yellow on there and with the fan brush flick it up into grass bring your fan brush in up and off to give you long grass concentrate on the tips of the grass the very top of the grass at the moment because we'll put some darker colors underneath and we'll turn the grass into dark grass in the foreground I dab 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 this area up here and that'll turn it into short grass you see how the grass turns green when the dark colors get mixed with the yellow that white bit there's a little bit much so I'll just put a little bit of grass over it it's a little bit too attractive now I'm loading the knife ready to paint a tree I have a little bit of white on it I'll put a little bit of blue a little bit of burnt sienna here and there touch it on so you're loading the tree onto the knife a little bit of red whatever you want on the tree just load it onto the knife a little bit of white but do take the time to mix your colors a little bit and have a good look at what you've got on the knife look to see that you've got dark on one side and light on the other and then we're ready to sculpture our tree hold the knife between your fingers and your thumb push rather firmly but more firm as you come down and sculpt your tree on you do get a chance to fix it up so if there's something goes wrong don't worry just look that you're not going to destroy too much of your picture and I'm holding my hand against my hand to hold it steady there bring it down and join it into the other tree butt there I'm glad I can still see that little bit of water there don't fiddle with it now I'll sculpture in the very dark of the butt of the tree that's the blue with a bit of burnt sienna in there it doesn't matter what color comes off clean your knife each time you pick up paint though here I'll put a bit of burnt sienna over the top and don't fiddle around with it just put it on and leave it there we can turn that into grass later now each time you pick up color clean your knife and pick up some raw color here I have a little bit of burnt sienna then I'll add a little bit of red and yellow just a few bright colors to show the bark on the edge of the tree there's a little bit of white a little bit of sunlight I'd like to get a little bit more perspective in there so I've loaded my knife with a little bit of white and if I put the white line on the edge of the tree here it will bring it forward well forward of the background that looks better now we touch up the grass with a fan brush I put a little bit of yellow on the fan brush and I can dab it and I can use it as a grass brush stroke or I can dab dab it and put little flowers on I think I still need a little bit of definition there between the butt of the tree and the background so I'll put a little bit of color in there now with that little round soft brush I'll load it with dark and light and hold it with two fingers and we can twiddle in our branches lift the brush off as the branch finishes and you'll get a thinner line have jagged branches and curve them into the picture we'll have another go bring it up twiddle it around and off the picture it doesn't matter what color they are sometimes they turn out very well and sometimes they're not so good but we can cover them up with foliage later make them jagged wobbly and jagged that's what gum trees look like and that one's a little bit light I'll add a bit of dark to that later or maybe I'll cover it over with foliage it doesn't matter we we'll make it up as we go along here I'll put a rather dark one coming down into the picture to bring your eye into the picture 
Now I'll clean my one inch house painting brush and pick up some dark on one side and light on the other that's yellow and the darks on the other side and dab it on and that'll give us a foliage brush stroke that's dabbed almost straight on. Keep these mushroom shapes going into umbrella shapes. See the mushrooms and umbrella shapes? Load it again. Mushroom shapes into umbrella shapes. Clean your brush each time when you load it. Dark and light. Oh, I've got a red tone on there. That's all right. I'll fix it up. I'll put some dark over the top of it. I picked up a little bit extra blue. Dab, 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 dab. Have plenty of darks in your foliage on your tree so you can really see the darks and the lights because they're very close to us. Very dark. And the same thing up in the corner of the picture. I'm working right up onto the masking tape. That's a bit pale. I do like to have it very dark in the corners. So I'll put some blue over the yellow and that'll turn into a greeny colour, which is exactly what we want. Now I'll add a few details, a little branch like that, but we better be careful because we don't want to take our eye out of the picture too much. And I'll put a little branch coming in. That should look better. And if I put some foliage on here, that'll stop the eye from travelling up the branch and off the picture. That looks better. This is very close to us, so we do need a bit of detail here. And I think we need a little branch there going up and touching the foliage. There. Now that looks better. And a few bits of bark hanging off the tree. Just put your brush on, turn it and drop it down. And unload the brush down the bottom. And a few twigs up here. Gum trees often have very white twigs. So you can put some white ones in there. I like to put white ones in the foliage area and dark ones where you can see the sky behind them. You might want to try using the knife to put some white twigs in the distance. You can put them in like that, but sometimes you have to touch a grass up because it gets on the grass. Well, that's nearly finished. I'll just put a little bit of shadow in there. That's a little bit dark. That doesn't matter. And I'll put a little bit of shadow over here just to balance it. But you don't have to do this if you don't want to put it in. You can leave it out. Now we'll take the masking tape off and see what our landscape looks like. That's a simple little exercise. You can use many colours in it. I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you.